when we left off, uh, we were finishing up last year and we're super excited about jumping into the new year. Uh, before we get going, we've got a great guest today. I want to remind you of two things. Uh, number one, we've got our inspirational brunch and regional awards coming up on January 26th. January 26th, that's next week. So if you didn't know about this or you haven't talked to your team leader about it, please reach out to your team leader. It's going to be a spectacular event. Starts at 11. We're going to serve a brunch. We'll do the inspirational piece. Then we'll hand out awards to our top agents. And we've got two great guest speakers that are going to be with us, uh, James Shaw and Diana Kokoska. So we're super excited about that. And we would love to have you guys join us for that event. I also want to remind you that uh, the family reunion is not far off. And if you haven't gotten your tickets for that, make sure you do that. Whether it's digital or in person, I'm going to be uh, in person. And uh, there, I think there's over 10,000 tickets now sold or over 12,000 tickets. So it's going to be a good uh, group. Uh, Mark Benson, uh, welcome. It's good to see you. And uh, the regional awards will not be online. That will just be in person. Of course, there is a digital uh, uh, capability with family reunion. So you can do that. Uh, we've already sold uh, 70 tables for the uh, regional event. So we've got uh, 600 people. It's going to be uh, terrific. Uh, family reunion, uh, just right around that, that uh, there will be a luxury event there. And there's lots of luxury contacts there. So we just want to kind of put that uh, in your mind. Uh, not only is there sports and entertainment now, which uh, people are jumping into, we've got this great luxury division uh, that uh, most of you are a part of. And you're certainly learning here on this call if you're not. And uh, the goal is to get into uh, the luxury division and be part of it at the highest level. So we're glad you're with us and uh, glad you're joining us today. Um, I want to show you a couple of things before we uh, jump in with uh, my co-host and her guest uh, today. I want to show you one of the great uh, listings that we sold since we last spoke. Arati Hammond had an amazing deal in Treasure Coast. We're super proud of her. She's out listing property today. So she can't share her, uh, you know, a tidbit about her uh, property. But look at this, a $3.3 million uh, property, highest priced home sold in Palm City in 2021. What a great way to finish out the year. So I want to say congratulations to Arati and also remind you that if you have a great luxury property, either a listing or a property that's sold, Michael Lewis will do a free marketing piece for you as part of what we do in the region. You just need to get with your market center and have them uh, help you out with that. So uh, congratulations to Arati and the folks there in Treasure Coast. I'm going to ask uh, Catherine to jump in with me here now. Uh, she is in Miami Beach, of course, and uh, does a great job down there and always uh, is a part of these calls. And uh, we love having her uh, share with us today. So uh, Catherine, I want you to jump in. And uh, I just want to say, first of all, uh, good afternoon. It's good to see you. Happy 2022. Good afternoon. Happy 2022, everyone. So glad to be back with all of you, although it's still through the computer. But hopefully we'll see you all very soon at Family Reunion. So, yeah. 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 Uh, as Kathy put in the chat box, uh, it's a little chilly uh, today, but it's kind of fun. We get to wear sweaters, which is a nice change of pace uh, for us, at least uh, here in Tampa. I think it was 37 or 40 or something like that when uh, we woke up. I wanted to go through the numbers with you, Catherine, before we uh, bring Amber in and uh, uh, take a look at what's happened um, through November, through November. These are uh, great opportunities to share numbers. You know, numbers are impartial and they're powerful. So just sharing these things, the numbers represent transactions over a million dollars. So in uh, 2021 through November, uh, we had uh, 51,004 transactions over a million dollars for a total of almost 90 billion with a B, Catherine. Isn't that amazing? amazing. And look at the growth. Plus 101%. Yeah, great point. Uh, we've really uh, taken this whole thing to another level. And we've got so many people now involved in luxury. Uh, the future is very bright. So you want to be sharing that with your people if they ever think that Keller Williams isn't really dealing in lots of luxury property. We're actually uh, the luxury leader. Nobody's doing 90 billion in property except for us, right? So um, that's great. Uh, what else we got uh, to share here? Total listings taken, total uh, buyer closings. Uh, you can see, as you said, uh, Catherine, look how much we're up in these categories. And look at all the opportunity here. What jumps out at you, Catherine, when you look at this? Well, it jumps out at me that we're still taking more listings than, uh, you know, we have buyers. But um, it still shows me that the listings sold 
is lower than the buyer. So it's really uh, right now a seller's market and we yeah. need to get those listings sold. Uh, but I'm really happy that people are still taking listings because uh, it's really hard to come by any listings right now. I, I know for my part, I'm really down on listings. Yeah, that's a great point. And w these are just the luxury numbers. Mm -hmm. We'll share the regional numbers with you at the regional team meeting uh, that we do. So you can see that it was a record breaking uh, year in every category except for listings taken for us as a region. So the fact that listings taken are, are up 25% here is really uh, terrific. It's awesome. great to see. I think what's also great to see is the referrals. It's like uh, if you if you add up the closings and the listings sold, we're like at around fifty two uh, thousand, and so seven thousand is referrals. That is, I would say one seventh, like fourteen percent. So yeah, fourteen sale is a referral. That's really amazing. Yeah. So my aha from that is to ask the question: Do we have an active plan to get referrals at the regional event on the 26th, at the family reunion uh, in February, at the other regional events that are coming up. We're teaching career visioning, uh, I think coming up in February, uh, and then again in March. So uh, you can get a hold of the regional calendar. All these are referral opportunities, right, Catherine, that, that anybody can take advantage of. Amazing. Yes. You've got to be prepared. Be prepared mm -hmm. and uh, meet people and create a database out of it. So uh, some great numbers. Uh, if you want those, those are on the luxury site under the luxury hub. Those are available to everybody. Everybody on the call uh, can get those. So you just need to dive in there and uh, grab them at first. Any reason you can't find them, just send us and, and we'll help you with that. Catherine, you, you know, shared uh, an idea for a guest today and we're super excited. She's actually one of the most dominant agents in Texas. She leads in uh, some categories is really the number one agent in Texas. So we're super excited about having her here. And why don't you uh, introduce her and uh, get us going? Okay, great. Well, super excited today that we have the amazing Amber Hart. She is from Austin, Texas. She is the number one solo agent in the state of Texas. And she has over 15 year experience, 11 years at the platinum top 50 agents. She is an elite 25 member. And she is a charter member of KW Luxury. So she actually helped start that whole division. Uh, she is also a, a KWU master faculty member. Amber. Hi. <laughs> Catherine, thank you so much for having me here today. This is really exciting. And I have to say, as a charter member of the luxury division, to see 15 billion in referrals from the luxury group on that form right there is pretty cool if you think about that right 15 billion was just handed to each other through our luxury division it's amazing spectacular i know that is really amazing so amber i want you to tell everyone a little bit um what is your area of expertise um where do you work and tell us a little bit about your production last year how did last year go for you absolutely so i am in austin texas um, if you haven't heard about Austin, it happens to be the um, number one real estate market in the United States right now. So last year was incredible. Um, I don't think anyone was prepared or ready for what was going to happen here. And it has continued to stay that way. Um, we are already right back to where we were last January. Um, very, very extreme low, low inventory with lots of out-of-state buyers coming this direction. Um, I've been with Keller Williams for 15 years, and I um, absolutely love the camaraderie, the culture, and the relationships that I've been able to make um, in luxury through all the years that we have been having um, events and getting together at reunions and the retreats. It's been just a fantastic network of people to be included with. Uh, last year, I did 133 million. Uh, 44 of my transactions were over a million dollars. So, okay, it was so let's talk to you year. right now, real quick. So, you are a solo agent. Yes. So, I'm an independent uh, agent with assistance. Yes. You did 133 million. I did. Yes. That and is that was, you know, Three years ago, that would have been unheard of in Austin, you know, so it, that really goes to show how what the incredible buyer growth has been here and then how much our properties have appreciated. Um, my average price point went up to a 1.1 in 2021. 
So that's a fantastic place to be as an average. That is amazing. Kudos to you. Um, you have my admiration. <laughs> like, I'm your fan. I'm your fan. So um, Amber, tell me a little bit, like, how does your organization work? Obviously, you can do this all on your own, although you're a solo agent. How does your organizational structure with admins look like? Absolutely. So I've been really blessed to have um, the same group of people with me now for a very long amount of time. I have what we call a listing coordinator. His name's Joey. He's been with me for 11 years and he handles everything on the listing side of my business um, from accompanying me to every list appointment to kind of hand holding the sellers through um, inspections and photos and marketing and things of that nature. On the flip side, I have a gentleman named Lionel who's been with me for nine years. He handles my contract to close coordination. So he just sees everything from the moment that a property goes under contract. He handles everything from there. He also um, prepares all of my offers, and especially in this market when we are writing so many every single day, it's been great to have someone that helps write offers, review them, uh, make sure everything is just perfect. You know, every I is dotted, T is crossed. Um, I have two, what we call showing assistants. So I have Lindsay and Connor, they go out with my buyers and tour properties with them, show them neighborhoods, amenities. I do all the negotiations um, on my part and all of the first talks and I'm the therapist is what I say. It's I'm always here when the buyers or sellers are having a rough day or just need to let something out. I'm the person they get to talk to. Um, it's my favorite part is, is being the therapist and being the calm, the calm voice through all the transactions. Okay, so that's basically it. So you have two admins and two showing assistants. I do. And then I also have um, a marketing coordinator. So Kathy helps with creating flyers, postcards, helping with social media posts, um, my newsletter, things of that nature, just kind of keeping everything really on brand and helping um, leverage out where my listing coordinator does a lot of the marketing. She takes over a second set of it. Amazing. So who covers for you when you go on vacation? That's probably what everybody wants to know. Right. So everyone that I just um, mentioned, they do that. Mm -hmm. um, I am always happy to still take my client calls when I'm on vacation. I've, like I said, I've been doing it for 15 years. I've had three kids during those 15 years. I've had a divorce and a marriage. I'm used to it at this point. So <laughs> they can call me. I'm accessible. Um, and my team in place is so wonderful that it's very rare that if I do need some time to myself, that they can't handle it for me. That is amazing. It's great. Yeah. So you have great people you can count on. Fantastic, fantastic leverage. And that's been so important. Um, like I said, having the people I've had for as long as I have, it has to do with a lot of mutual respect um, and also a loyalty. Um, and it just, my goal planning, when I sit down and goal plan, they are with me. We goal plan together. I want to see everyone that's working with me to grow, to be millionaires. I want them to have huge, crazy goals that I can help them work through and obtain One of my favorite things to see is when, when they're grabbing their goals. One of my assistants today just wrote me and said, hey, we're ready to invest. So I'm going to help them you know, with an investment property right now. That gets me so excited to be able to mentor them. Awesome. Well, that's really great to hear that you take care of your people um, I, and that you also want them to be successful, not just yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, we're in this together and, and I really, I love watching them grow. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Um, okay, so let's, let's get to your business. How do you get your business? How do you get your listings? How do you get your buyers? Um, I know you told me a little bit about it, but uh, let our amazing South Florida <laughs> agents know what is your secret? Absolutely. So Obviously, at this point in my career, a lot of it is referral. And as many of you know, the longer you're maintaining relationships and checking in with your database, referral becomes usually your number one source. 
yet at the same time with as many people as we have moving here, lots of new faces, lots of new people, it's really important for me to be very prominent in my area. So majority of my goal setting is giving back to my community. Um, I'm very involved in our school districts that we have here, um, also with our city council, um, very involved with all the different philanthropic groups that we have. I want to have a presence with all of them and help them in any way that I can. So being really, really involved and structured with all of the groups that are in my community keeps me top of mind when it comes to, oh, I just heard of someone wanting to sell a home. They're going to think of me as I'm the person that's helping them. Okay. So um, uh, walk us a little bit through that. How does that work? Okay. So uh, you want to get involved in the community. Where do you start? If somebody wants to do the same, do you Absolutely. approach them first or do they approach you? No, we have to go and approach them. <laughs> Are there times I've been approached? Absolutely. But to make a good impact and an effort, you need to get out there and, and start meeting people. Um, I'll touch on this in a little bit, but what I do for the local philanthropic nonprofits is I've gotten to know um, their board members, uh, what their mission is, what their goals are. Um, I host a monthly event for my clients. And like I said, I'll go into this in more detail. Yet every month when I hold an event, we're supporting a local business and I'm supporting one of the local nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So in that way, I'm spreading to all these wonderful people that I know a little info about this nonprofit and how they can help and be involved. And then during my event, we are helping. We're raising money or we're bringing diapers and bringing food or doing a blood drive, whatever that is that can help support that group. We're going to be doing that that month and it gives them exposure. And so in turn, we're helping them get more exposure for their group yet also helping a local business. So it's all, I always want people in my community to know if they need anything, they can reach out to me. And, and we've had that happen. We had a business that called in November and they said, Amber, can you please, please, please have your group come in? It's been really hard with COVID. We just haven't had a lot of customers. This isn't really you know, a great market for what we're doing. What can you do? And of course, what do I do? I'm going to rally the troops. We're going to have our event there. We're going to get them as much exposure, um, social media, tagging, getting people over there. And then, like I said, bringing a nonprofit to be involved as well so that they can give back. And it's amazing how even when someone's in need, how excited they are to say, oh, I'll do a giveaway or I'll donate a, you know, a portion of all the sales tonight to that group. So everyone starts to work together and it's just really like organic and, and a great way to keep people um, involved with each other. And if people feel like they need to get their presence out there, they know they can rely on me to help them do that. that I, I love to hear uh, that everybody synergizes and everybody works together. As far as planning this whole thing, I'm sure a lot of people on this call are going to think, oh my God, I, ha I have barely time to sell houses. How do I organize events on top of that? So if you can walk us through that, like how far in advance you plan, um, how the marketing looks like of those events, how many steps on how many touches you have with your database and where you market those events, that would be wonderful. Absolutely. So I will say this, I keep it very easy. I don't overthink any of my events whatsoever. I think it kind of just ruins the, the fun of it, right? So I plan them usually the month or the month before the events, because it's usually what's top of mind, right? A business may have just opened and it's like their grand opening, or I know I can get my group in before they open, right? So that's the exclusive sneak peek at the day spa that's gonna open next month. My group gets to go in first, we get the tours, we get to see everything, right? So I'm constantly just keeping my pulse on lists of local businesses that I wanna help and, or need help, anything that's new or coming to the area. Then in turn, like I said, I have a running list of all the local nonprofits and I'll reach out to them and say, hey, I'm doing my um, event this month. Would you like to um, be a part of that? 
And by that, that usually means having them come and speak for a few minutes, right? Mm -hmm. It's nothing, nothing crazy, nothing formal. It's very relaxed because we want these events to be fun because I want people to come out. It's not like a business meeting. This is, you know, there is cocktails and food and fun and it's relaxed. Um, so we have the nonprofit come in and they'll speak. So my database of people that I invite is always changing and rotating. Um, it started as what I called girls night, girls night out, right? So it would be, you know, all my clients that were female, friends, family, anyone I could think of that would just want to come out once a month and, and learn a little bit more about the community that they live in. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really fantastic for my clients that are moving here, right? If they're moving here from California, they don't have a friend base yet. They don't know where the kids can go and play. They don't know what activities there are. I always make sure they're invited immediately. Come in and I'll even talk about them to the other women that are there. I'll say, hey, you know, Amy's here tonight. She just moved here from San Francisco. She's got three kids. After I get done yapping, talk to her, have fun tell her what your kids are doing, invite her over, you know, that sort of thing. So it's a great way to just get people together and, and, and make them feel comfortable in a new community. Um, so that list of who I invite is constantly growing. Um, I keep it as an evite is how I keep it structured. I have um, in my command database, I have my event night list. And then I also have an event night list in my evite. That's just how I keep it simple easy peasy. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had my husband try to get involved. To, oh, sorry. Go ahead. How many people normally show up to your events? I would say we range from 50 to 80. Wow. So it's, it's pretty big. It's, it's pretty like- big. Now I will say this clearly through COVID numbers changed dramatically. Right. And we went to different profiles where we would do zoom meetings, Zoom parties, wine tastings on Zoom. You know, we, we, we really tried to build around it. As of about November, the numbers have come right back up. So I, I can see that everybody's ready to come back out, support all these businesses that have been so hurt, get out there and, and, and be together. So yeah, 50, 50 is a good number to say that show up. And, and you know, some months people can come and some months they can't. Uh, and that's what makes it great is people are, are really involved. I think the, the most fun one that we do is always for um, December, our holiday event. Mm-hmm. We have a local nonprofit here called Lake Travis Crisis Ministries, and they have um, a list of people that they know will not be able to have Christmas Um, not be able to celebrate the holiday or do anything for their family. So I always adopt families from them and then I get my group involved. So we'll do a sign up sheet and I've got all the kids Christmas lists and gift lists and everybody signs up to bring food and, and gifts. And so that event that I host in December, everyone brings all the presents. We talk about the family Um, And then I always have a great touch because then my kids and I go and deliver everything. Um, This year, it was great. The family actually sent me pictures of the kids opening up all the gifts. And that was so great. I was so happy they did it. They were really excited. So then I get to, in turn, send out, you know, a beautiful email to everyone thanking them for all the help they did to help out these families in our community that otherwise wouldn't have anything. And they tell me that. I mean, the the family we had this year, they're living in an upstairs storage area on top of a building. You know, I mean, these are, these are people that just any little bit helps. So to be able to come in and let them have some relief is just, it's fantastic. And so my group, as it grows every year, we get to adopt more families, right? So that makes it super exciting is the, the bigger we get, the more we can help. That's amazing. Right. Okay, um, maybe Ariel, um, can you show, can you share some pictures on the screen of Amber's events? And then we can just look at the pictures and Amber can talk a little bit about the events. Because I think this is something that everybody can really learn from you a lot, lot. the the giving part of the business. Sorry, Catherine, I don't think I have an event photo. I have her mailers. Oh, okay, then let me see. (laughs) Um, Okay. Can I share my screen? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay, perfect. 
All right, so, um, hold on. I think that was not the right way to share it. Okay, so let's do this one here. So what are we seeing here? This was the Christmas party? Right, so this was one of the events we had at um, a local coffee shop that's family owned. They have had some really hard times and so we hosted it there. Um, I always have great food and drinks uh, and I, I, I take care of that um, as part of the event. And so we usually, everybody just kind of enjoys, has fun. Like I said, I'll usually speak for a bit, then we'll have um, the nonprofit come and speak. And then also whoever the owner is for the local business, we wanna hear their whole story, right? So we get to hear these great stories about people that otherwise they may not know. Awesome. Um, I have another one that I wanna share, um, this one. Why was this event? Okay, so this was at a restaurant that had just opened. It's called Plate. Mm -hmm. um, the owner is Zentra. She lives here locally. Um, we hosted the event and the restaurant, had it to ourselves. The gentleman that you see standing there speaking, um, he is the president or was the president. He's not at the moment, but he's still on the board of crisis ministries. He was here to talk about, um, what supplies that they are very low on at that point. They were, it was things like feminine hygiene, diapers and wipes. So we got to hear what the needs were that evening. So our next month, we all came together to raise those items and bring them to them. That's amazing. Okay, I have one more, and this one looks really fun. Um, is this one of your girlfriend events? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we had the girls that was um, kind of wrapping up the end of the evening. We just did a nice big group picture with everybody. Um, uh, they just have such giving hearts. I love, I just, it almost makes me cry just to see everyone there. But yes, it's just a great group. Um, we usually always take a big group picture so people can have it as memories and a little book to look back on. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So um, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, uh, and I've also seen a few questions in the chat of people. Um, what everybody wants to know is how do you attract and maintain your luxury clientele? Right. So I think that Attracting luxury clientele is being really authentic and true to yourself. Um, always find out what they are really passionate and interested in. Um, if you can find that out and, and help bring that awareness to other people, they are going to love you forever. Um, my, one of the things I do at the beginning of every single year is I call my database and I ask them what group they're passionate about. Typically a nonprofit may not be, it may be their kid's soccer team, right? And I let them know that throughout the year, I will be giving a portion of my commissions in their name to the group that they're passionate about. So those calls at the beginning of the year, I start to make a list of all the groups and who gave me that information. And if it's a, a group I've never heard about, then I want to get more info myself and learn about it, right? So it's great to, you know, I've, someone might say the Ronald McDonald House, and I'm like, okay, great. I know exactly what they do. But someone else might come to me and say, Austin Pets Alive. And I'm like, hmm, what did they do? Okay, great. It's a uh, learning opportunity for me as well. So then throughout the year, I get to do another touch and I'll call them and say, hey, I just wanted to let you know that today I made a donation to Austin Pets Alive in your name. You should be receiving an email. And I'm really thankful that you gave me their name and information because I got to learn about them and I'm excited to be able to help them. Um, and if you ever think of anyone else that you're passionate about, let me know. That is so that's a great, that's a great touch to, I, I mean, every year, every January, that is my call, right? And it's a great way to start the year because I know that we're going to be able to help. And, and, and when people are passionate about um, whatever it is in their lives, right? If it's art, if it's sports, whatever it is, if you can make them feel even more excited about it, 
they are going to cherish that moment. They will not forget when you made that call and helped out who they care about. And especially, uh, you know, most of us, we call clients because we want something. <laughs> Let's be honest. You make the call because you want to give something. So that distinguishes yourself right away from the rest of the crowd. Absolutely. I, I will never call any of my clients and ask for anything ever. Um, my, my client calls are typically, Hey, I know you've been in the house for a year. What's falling apart and how can I help you? You know, it's, it's stuff like that. You know, it's just real easy, calm, you know, Hey, I know you talked about remodeling. Have you started? Have, Oh, you have, I want to come over and see it. You know, let me come over. I want to see what you did. Just mm -hmm. keep it light, conversational, friendly. Um, you know, you don't have to just call and say, who do you know that wants to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? You know, I mean, that's, it's a great script. It is. It's a great script. Yet, if you're, if you're talking, <laughs> if you're talking to your database on a regular basis about how you can help them, they're going to remember you and, and, and they are going to tell everyone else about you. Um, and it clearly so works for you. I mean, you sold way over a hundred million and you don't use the regular script, you developed your own and it's, it's working for you. Yeah, I think if you can always tie it into giving back and helping, it works. And it can't not work, honestly, it just can't. If you continue to grow your business on helping your clients um, and knowing their passions, it's gonna come back tenfold. Awesome. Um, so besides the call uh, at the beginning of the year, how else do you stay in touch throughout the year with your clients? Hello? Hola, Kathy, ¿cómo estás? <laughs> that was so cute. Okay. <laughs> That's um, so cute, right? Do, so do you, what do you use um, as a follow-up? Um, what technology do you use? Okay, so if we talk about, and I call this kind of the fluff, right? This is not my focus, and I told you this yesterday. Uh, my focus truly is 100% the relationships. I am happy to talk to my clients. I'm happy to reach out to them. Um, but name recognition and branding wise, we do um, mailers, postcards, social media. Um, I, I hate to say the basics, but you know, getting getting it out there where they see my face all the time. You know, everyone in my farm you're going to get a lot of stuff from me. Um, collateral, I guess you could say. Do mm -hmm. I think that's what I base my business on? No way. Um, is it good for people that I don't know yet? Absolutely. You know, I can't, I don't know every single person in my farm. I would love to. So it's great to be able to be able to send things out so that people are seeing me consistently um, coming across their feed or in their mailbox Mm -hmm. uh, magazines, local newspapers, um, pretty much any big event in our community, I'm going to be the sponsor of it. So they're going to be able to see me there at those events. Um, here, what you're seeing, um, the first little page is just like our Instagram page. Um, some of our posts, we do testimonials and um, awards. That first slide is just kind of like our, our 2020 recap slide that we did. Um, direct mailers. So we completely quit doing mailers for a long amount of time. And we've gone back to it. I'm doing a really hard, heavy hitting first of the year. Um, I'm sending a postcard a week to a very specific area of my database called the Hills. And you can see here, this first one, you know, did you hear I just sold this home in the Hills? Like we're, we're sending those out like every single week for all the homes we sold in there last year. Um, I, we're doing a big campaign now about saving my phone number. So it's put realtor in your phone, save my number, throw away the postcard. I know you're not going to hold on to it anyway, but save my number in your phone, right? Okay. We all know it's going to get thrown away. So it's a call to action. Pick up your cell phone, put realtor in, put my phone number in. I don't care if you don't remember my name. I'll tell it to you when you call me. <laughs> And then quick question. So for the Hills marketing campaign, can you tell us a little bit like how many houses do you hit and you go once a week right now, right? Yeah, so we're doing that right now. That's just kind of our 2020 hit it hard. It's a very desirable area in my farm. Um, not many properties come up and I sold a ton of homes in there last year off market. So I want that community to know 
because they might not necessarily know, right? It was off market. That community, you cannot have signs. You cannot have real estate signage, right? So it's almost like I sold a ton of properties, but the community might not know about it. So that's why we're heavy, heavy hitting that area right now. And how many homes is that? So we do, I think it's 1,100 flyers. So we kind of put a pin in the middle and did the 1,100 surrounding it. Wow. Okay. And you do that like once a week. So you basically send out over 4,000 a month right now. Right now. And just like I said, this is not our normal. This is a heavy hitting first of the year, January and February come in hard because I know when everyone's about to call and it's going to be March, right? March is going to be that call. So I'm going to have so much coming to them that they're going to not be able to forget about me. Um, we also do the magazine, the Unique Homes Luxury Home Magazine that has my photo on the front cover. It goes out four times a year. We send that um, out to our database also. Um, mm -hmm. People love it. And I'll tell you what's funny is it's almost better when someone makes a mistake because then you know who's watching, right? And one of the times the, the company put the mailing sticker over my face on the cover of the magazine. <laughs> I had so many people reach out to me and say, you need to get your money back, Amber. I can't believe this happened, you know, something like that. And I said, oh my God, people are looking at my magazine. Like it, it made me realize, because otherwise you don't really hear about it, right? I've got a few clients that'll take a picture of it and send it to me and because they're sweet, you know, but it was, it's kind of funny when there's a mistake that happens or the other day, one of my e-blasts went out and I totally had a word misspelled, very large. And, and I had a ton of people write me and say, oh, Amber, there's a mistake. And I said, oh, good. That was my marketing ploy. I wanted you to write me. <laughs> this is what, where you so, yeah, we're just people that really like stand behind you, right? Because they, right. they, they want to give you feedback. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. So we kind of come at them at all angles. But like I said, my absolute favorite is just to be out and about in the community, giving back and checking in on my clients and making sure everybody's doing great. Okay, great. Um, as far as command, um, when we spoke, you told me that you use command at a very high level. So tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> okay, I would say high level for me. I would say if, <laughs> if you're one of the more tech savvy people, you, I might be bare bones basic. Um, we did convert. I was a top producer. That's who I utilized for, gosh, 12 years was the, the CRM program that I used. Um, Converting that over was terrifying and it ended up being a breeze. Uh, so we converted our entire database over to command and then we got everybody set up into the um, monthly neighborhood, um, you know, where it's kind of tells you this is what your private house might be worth. And it's funny when it's really off. I love getting those calls like what? <laughs> um, so we converted everyone over to that. And I think one really great part of command that a lot of people might not be using yet is the goal setting. Um, this is a great time of year to jump in there and, and try this out for the first time. So if you go into command, uh, you go to reports, goals and then goal setting and you can type in you know kind of what your goals are and then Keller Williams has already pre put in conversion rates and you may want to look at those um, and double check like right now Keller Williams puts in like a 75 percent conversion rate my conversion rate is higher than that so it makes my um, appointments go down a bit so I corrected that <laughs> um so go in and you can put all those numbers in. Just make sure that throughout every transaction that you're utilizing, going into your client and saying when you had the appointment, when you made the first call, when you had the appointment, when you got the listing signed, when it went under contract and when it closed, because it's tracking all of that for you. So then you can start seeing your numbers monthly. And I think it's Great. I mean, if you can jump on right now in January and just start using that, just pop your goals in and then just remember every time you've got somebody calling you or you're calling them, plug it in, put them in, put them in the database and use it. Um, so for me, that's the majority of what we're using is the numbers, the goal setting, and then just database um, touches. Uh, we don't keep the um, like pre-made emails. I don't utilize that. I do my own um, e-blast out. Um, but I do love it for just a great place to stay. I will say the app 
has been fabulous. I don't know if anyone has been using the command app. It is extremely user friendly. Click right on it. All your database is right there. It's 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 been fabulous. Really, really great. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that because I think a lot of us are not using command to the full extent yet that we could, right? Oh, there is so much there. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I am not using it to the full, full effect either. And I would love to. Me because I <laughs> use it more. So yeah. thanks for sharing that really amazing. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, I, on my goals, that's something that I usually write down is Amber for this year, I want you to grasp another piece of command, right? Like I want you to learn another piece of this or utilize another function of it. If I learned one a year, I'm happy. Right. I do not have to know that entire program backwards and forwards because I just know I won't. Yeah. So from, you know, listening to you speak about like the many facets of your business, um, I really get a feeling you're a, a doer. You don't just, you know, wait and plan until you have everything together and you're not a perfectionist. You rather do it than uh, not doing it at all. So um, I see that with command, you just embrace it. You know, you're not perfect. You do it the same with the events. You don't feel like you have to have a marketing plan one to 15. You just do it, even though it's not perfect. I think this is really a big learning lesson for me and hopefully for a lot of other people that always wait to get things done because we have an excuse. We say, oh, I'm not ready. Yeah, I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, right? I mean, especially when you're talking about luxury, someone wrote a question like how, what did, what would you wish you knew? Here it is. What, what is something you wish you knew before you started luxury? I wish I wasn't scared. Um, you know, if I was, I was like, okay, this is scary. Do I fit into this place? You know, are they going to, are they going to know I'm not luxury? Is this going to be, you know, all those fears. And, and what I've learned through these years is, no, it's not scary at all. These people are just like anybody else. Um, they want to be taken care of. They want to they want to share what they're passionate about. They want to have someone that's honest with them, that's cool, relaxed, and um, and not be scared. You know. So that's why I just I try not to ever overanalyze anything. You know, if we're gonna have an event and I need to throw it together tomorrow, we'll make it happen, right? It's you just can't stress about it. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. So um, we do have a few questions, but before we get into the questions, I wanted you to tell us real quick about the new homes division at KW, because you told me you're going to be the regional area director of that. I am. I'm not going to be for your region. I am for Texas um, yet. So please look into this. If you have any passion whatsoever for new construction and our developer relationships and development, Gary has a huge passion right now to take over that part of the market. Um, you know, the vision right now is that on-site sales that we see right now will be completely changed and shifted. And those will be Keller Williams agents as our on-site sales at all new home construction communities, that developers will be going to our credentialed agents for new construction as well. Um, BRDE is the first course that you're gonna take, Builder Realtor Developer Education course. Um, you do have a regional director, and Catherine, I can put your person that you have in charge with you if you wanna get that out to your group. Um, they can let you know when all the next sessions are, but it's just really, really exciting division um, for our group. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we have a few questions. Um, Dan is asking, curious to hear what your typical day looks like. What daily standards do you have? I love that question. So. I would say that that has changed um, as I've aged. Um, I, I really was the type that would wake up and come straight to the office and, and, and just have my day here, right? And now I've really put daily self-care goals on myself that I focus on the most because when I'm feeling good and, and feeling 
um, mentally well and physically well, I know that that's going to come back to my clients. So a day for me, like I said, I have three kiddos. So I get up early and get all my kiddos ready for school and, and get them out for their day. Uh, I have a park near my home and I love to walk every morning. It grounds me. It's um, when I say my prayers, I do some meditation during that time. I love listening to a great podcast. I'm super in love with Huberman Labs right now. He's a, a fitness guru. Oh, he's amazing. So I, that's just kind of my time where I um, spend with myself. Uh, then I come back and get ready for my day. I, like I said, I do not typically go out and show property and things of that nature. I am here negotiating. I am also really passionate about investment and I have a very large uh, group of clients that are investors. And I spend a lot of time focusing on that, looking for deals for them. Um, in turn, I like to invest in them as well. <laughs> uh, and, and that also helps me um, with my referral business. Last night I had one, we had to write an offer in uh, Golden, Colorado. And I called the listing agent and she said she had seven offers. So I knew I needed someone that could write an offer last night at 7 p.m. Um, so that's always great when you can pick up the phone and call someone from Keller Williams and tell them, hey, can you write an offer? Don't have to show the house, just write it. My clients are great and they'll go way over asking. Um, so I spend a lot of time looking at the market. Uh, that's probably my biggest passion. I can tell you exactly how many homes are on the market right now, how many are pending, what all the pocket listings are. That's what I pride myself on is that market knowledge. And I study it every single day, all morning long. That's what I'm looking at and, and working towards. Um, I want people to be able to know they can ask me any question about our market and I'll be able to answer it for them. Um, investing is just another way to build wealth. So I like to speak to my clients about investing and, and what I've done myself and how I can help them grow, help their children, um, things of that nature. It's just another great way to grow my business. Um, that's my day. <laughs> that's my day. And negotiating contracts all day, right? That's oh. that's the other part of it was there like a, a time like when did that change for you because you said now you have different priorities was yeah. that during COVID or was that before I would say COVID helped out tremendously mm -hmm. if yeah. there was anything good that came from COVID it really made me sit back and go wow I was doing way too much mm -hmm. uh, you know and you know how it is in this business there could be another event every single day we could have I could be on 20 zooms if I wanted to today and we, and we all know that, right? We could be. Um, so it's well, really analyzing. Us. We really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you make time for us and not for the other 19. Right. And I think that's the point. It's like you have to analyze, okay, what's really going to be a great benefit for you? What are the things that I want to set goals for? Um, but yes, uh, that COVID certainly helped me put place myself first and then in turn grow my business from there mm -hmm. um so yeah so you had to say no a lot say that again it cut out i, I said you you had to say no a lot yes yes and, and if and if it's not no it's just another way for me to figure out how i can still either be there or help um without saying no just figuring out another way to be involved that might not take as much time okay all right. So next question here we have, um, I would love to know how you got started, how you got to where you are now. That, that's a very complex question, right? right. Yeah. It's a good question. Um, so I was not involved necessarily in real estate. I graduated from college and was a day spa consultant. Um, I had always had a passion for real estate. Um, and when I say that, it's like, what does that mean? I mean, I really don't even know. I kind of liked it, really. I saw a lot of very successful women in real estate, and that excited me. Um, so I decided to get my license, and I will tell you this. I quit my job, and I held garage sales every single weekend to pay my bills while I went through real estate school. And in those first few months, um, that's how I paid my bills. I was pregnant when I started real estate school and, um, 
<laughs> it, it was definitely a, a lot of hard work and, and learning how this whole process works. And then for me learning, okay, this is the relationship building. Let's start building relationships right now and, and getting in there. So I did not come from some background of luxury. I wasn't, you know, living at the country club on the yachts or anything like that. I, I truly got to where I am today by caring about people. Um, a lot of them did have a lot more money than I did um, and really figuring out what they did for their goals. You know, a lot of my clients are entrepreneurs. So how cool is it that I get to listen to how they got to where they are? Um, it's a huge perk of our career is getting to know these amazing clients that we have. Um, so I would say growing my luxury clientele is once you get to know luxury clients, then they want you to meet their other friends. And I try and get their other friends to meet me. Um, and a lot of that is having events or having um, something private for them, um, especially with the uh, philanthropic side of it. Um, I've had a lot of clients that are on boards where I've said, hey, I'll do a donation um, for my service. Um, it's a great way to get clientele because they have to give me the name and phone number of every person that signed up to bid on me. It's worth, <laughs> me. It's worth me. It's worth me not having you know, my commission going to the, um, the charity. It's worth it for sure to get that list of people that wanted to hire me and got outbid. Um, but I started, someone just said, how long did it take you to start selling? I'll tell you what I did in the beginning. There was a luxury community um, being built in, in my area. And I did not have any listings there, obviously. Um, so I went to a listing agent there and I said, hey, can I sit open house here? And she was thrilled. She said, fine, sit there. And so one thing I had noticed in the beginning was I saw so many agents that would go to an open house one weekend um, and then the next weekend, they'd be at an open house in another area, and then they go to an open house in another area or another price point, and there just wasn't a lot of consistency there. So I sat in the same house every single weekend until it sold. So everyone that would come through on the weekends for this new development would see me all the time. And of course, what did they start to think? I'm like the listing agent, obviously. And I knew so much about that area. You know, if they asked a question, I knew how many lots there were, what the amenities were, what the HOA was, what the utilities, what schools it went to. If they said they came in the door and they said, oh, this is a four bedroom, we need a five. Guess who knew where the five bedroom was? Me. Yeah. So I didn't want to jump around because I feel like if you're jumping to open houses, you can't really be the expert when they walk in the door, right? You're just they're like, oh, tell us about this community. I feel like sitting there and I'll tell y'all, I held open houses for seven years, right? Mm -hmm. Seven years of my business, I held open houses. I, I, that was one of my things, right? And being in a luxury community to do that helped me build that. Um, I became uh, very dear friends with the developer of that community. Talk about a great person to have in my back pocket. You know, he lived in Dallas. He was a big developer all over Texas. He actually brought me in to finish out the sales in that neighborhood, the remaining lots. That was, I mean, I was new, right? It was just tenacity and being there all the time. Um, as soon as that house sold that I was in, I would just go to another one in that same community. Can I hold this open? Here I am again. And for me, that really worked in the beginning. That's how I started to meet luxury buyers. So you hustled, you worked hard, and you trumped with knowledge. Correct, right? Right. Because I knew if another agent came in that community holding an open house, most likely I knew a lot more than they did. I love that. Okay, so we only have a few more minutes left. So I we have a lot of questions we won't be able to answer all of them, but here is one that I really think might be really interesting. Um, Angela is asking, I would love to know how you, no, hold on, uh, no, flow. That was the question I wanted to feature. What are the things you see that changed from when you started and now in luxury? <laughs> I mean, I feel where I am, there's a lot more luxury, right? Um, Austin was not the same as it is right now. And 
back before luxury was kind of far and few between. And especially when I was networking with all of you wonderful Keller Williams agents and other areas where the price point was far, far higher than, than where we used to be. Now, buyer calls, almost every single one of them is a luxury buyer that I'm talking to. Um, so it's a lot more of luxury involvement. Before it would kind of be a big deal. Oh, there's a luxury property. We have this listing. Now it's almost a consistency due to the desirability of Austin right now. I, I know that has just a huge part in it. So, um, but really I don't see much has changed. I think luxury buyers still want the exact same treatment that they have always wanted and same with luxury sellers. Um, you know, a lot of people say that people want all this over the top baloney and I don't agree with that. I've never had any of my clients say I have to have a Ferrari in their front yard or anything like that. And I've dealt with some of the wealthiest people in Austin. So um, people just want someone that has the answers that can negotiate on their behalf and, and feel very comfortable and confident walking them through that transaction. And like I said, I like to help them with their investments at that point. So growing them as a relationship forever is, is key for me. Awesome. I love that. Okay. Um, Mark, what do you got for us? Wow, we're so excited uh, today, Amber. You, everybody you can see in the chat box just loved listening to you guys. Catherine, I loved your uh, questions were so good. Uh, especially they love your marketing, Amber. So if we can get some of that stuff and share that with them, they would love that. Uh, one of the questions was, did you hire your own marketing person or did you outsource that? I will tell people, uh, we'll get a quick answer from you, Amber, but then I'll remind people, if you want to hire your own person, Career Visioning is coming up March 30th. If you want to outsource that immediately, you could go to Michael Lewis, uh, at least immediately to get something done. Amber, what would you say on that? Did you, you have a marketing coordinator? Is that outsourced? Did you hire your own person? So I hired my own now. Um, we did use Michael Lewis previously, and he's great. If you just want to get jump in this and get started, do it. I mean, we've got so many resources that we can. Um, the person that I hired was um, a friend, client, member of the community, right? And, and I loved her, and I saw some things she was doing, and I said, hey, let's meet. And we did, and she's been so fantastic. And she's opened uh, many opportunities for me because of people that she knew. So for me, like I said, if I can hire anyone locally, that just helps me in my sphere um, for her to connect more people to my brand. Well, we can't thank you enough. That's a great idea. Thank you for sharing that. We're going to uh, drop your information in the chat box so people can connect with you if they want to follow up with questions. And before we take off, we have uh, uh, some breaking news we want to share with you. So we're going to tell you a couple of things and then give you some uh, information we had not seen yet until today. Really good stuff. So just give us one more minute here. Social media kit. Remember, you can access a social media kit. There are pre-made materials for you that's available on the luxury site. So if you want to plug into that, just look for it. And the uh, web address is right there. We also have updates on the Luxury Learning Series. The Luxury, luxury Learning Series has now gone to the second Friday of every month. So look at that. Ariel has already updated it. So uh, it's now second Friday of every month. So uh, look for that as well. Is that, uh, would that be this Friday? No, that would have been last Friday, right? So uh, I guess the next one would be in February. I think we're on our third Friday of the month. Uh, we also have the Luxury Spotlight, which Brady does a deeper dive on numbers, and that's exclusive to Earned In Luxury members. That will be every other month, but there will be one on January 26th. So if you're at the Regional Awards, you'll get the recording of that, and uh, we'll try and facilitate that for you. The other piece that we just got in that I think is pretty exciting is there will be a luxury event in Orlando, and we have the information on that. So 5.30 to 7.00. That'll be at the Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center, but it's Monday night. So make sure on your calendar and your schedule, if you're going to build your luxury connection, that's the place to do it. It'll be at 530 on February 21st. And we're excited about uh, that event. Maybe a chance to meet you, Amber, out at uh, that event. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you out there, uh, Catherine, as well, right? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Amber, so much for your time. I think this was very valuable for a lot of people on the call. No, thank you so much for having me. It was great. We loved it. Thank you to both of you. We will see you next time here on March 15th. That's what I got. That'll be our next 
regional call. Uh, and we hope to see you on the 26th here in Florida, uh, Fort Lauderdale, or in February in Orlando at the family reunion. Thanks again, everyone, for being here. Happy New Year. We'll talk to you again soon. Happy New Year. Thank you, Amber. Thank you very much. Angel, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, great. So the the, lo the luxury social media kit, if you're an earned in agent, you go to connect, um, connect okay. KW, and you can um, go to the luxury hub and you can open it from there. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Happiness.